uh, for understanding reducing sugar let's get back to our original structure all right in cyclized it formed hemiacetal this is not also known as hemiacetal all right it formed hemiacetal but actually if you go to see this is an aldehyde group so whenever there is a glycosidic linkage if this this oh is involved in glycosidic linkage that means this is involved and if this is involved that means this cannot be oxidized having understood now let's get into the structure we studied about sucrose being invert sugar now let us understand whether it's reducing or not now see in this case this was the potential aldehyde group but now what we find is in forming sucrose that oh which was free that oh that oh c so this is what i was talking about so this if you open it up it's an aldehyde group this first carbon is aldehyde group and that had formed hemiacetal and so it had formed oh now here that oh has been involved so since that oh has been involved so as a result of that it loses its capacity to reduce the counterpart now aldehyde we are all aware about has the property of reducing so it can act as a reducing agent when it acts as a reducing agent it itself gets converted into carboxylate and reduces the counterpart whereas when it is an oxidizing agent it gets itself reduced to form an alcohol and oxidizes the counterpart whereas here we, we are talking about property of reducing and non reducing sugar so when we talk in terms of reducing sugar so this sugar should have capacity to get oxidize itself and reduce the counterpart then we would be calling it as reducing sugar all right so let's see what basically happens what's the future of this whether reducing or non reducing for better understanding let's understand the reducing tests that we use tolins test or silver mirror tests are used for testing reducing property of a molecule now here an aldehyde is reacted with tolins reagent tolins reagent is ammoniacal silver nitrate in basic medium boiled so what aldehyde does is it reduces silver plus iron to silver zero silver metal we know that gain of electron is reduction so it has done its job of reducing molecule all right so if we take sugar the if sugar does this job that is when we boil sugar with tolins reagent if we see silver mirror that itself means sugar is reducing sugar and it has reduced silver and what happens to itself obviously it itself would get oxidized and aldehyde group gets oxidized to carboxylate so confirm that sugar is a reducing sugar but for that aldehyde group has to be present all right so whether aldehyde group present or not present decides whether it is reducing or non reducing sugar respectively all right now let's understand what's felling's test prior to understanding felling's test let's understand what is felling solution now there are two solutions felling a and felling b felling a solution has copper sulfate crystals in concentrated sulfuric acid and felling b has sodium potassium tartrate in sodium hydroxide solution now sodium potassium tartrate we also call it as rochelle salt all right all right so prior to this has to be mixed together just before the reaction is to be done now let's understand felling's test as we did in case of silver mirror test or tolins test aldehyde to which is added felling a felling b and heated 
so what we end up with is a red precipitate why red precipitate because copper which was initially plus 2 oxidation state obviously plus 2 oxidation state copper sulfate so blue in color it turns into red precipitate so this has got reduced to this so from plus 2 oxidation state blue color got reduced to plus 1 oxidation state red precipitate all right we as i already explained gain of electron is reduction so we expect aldehyde to get oxidized to carboxylate all right so these are two tests which we use for testing whether sugar are reducing or non reducing all right and now coming back to our molecule it becomes very clear that this oh has been involved so this was our potential aldehyde group now that potential aldehyde group has been involved in glycosidic linkage so it's not free now for acting as reducing sugar all right so sucrose is non reducing sugar all right now let's check in in case of maltose in case of maltose what we find is it is glucose glucose alpha alpha glucose all right and the linkage is between 1 4 all right whereas this one is free so the glycosidic linkage is obviously this potential aldehyde group is involved in glycosidic linkage but it is involved with fourth hydroxy which is not anomeric carbon all right so this anomeric carbon hydroxide involved but this anomeric carbon is free as a result of which this acts as reducing sugar so maltose is a reducing sugar because this is free over here all right name wise it is alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage so potential aldehyde group not involved in glycosidic linkage so it's a reducing sugar all right so that's how we check out whether a sugar is reducing or non-reducing sugar it's all based on potential aldehyde group which is present with anomeric carbon all right